A politician turns the tables on reporters who told fables. Our favorite Canadian. He munches on fruit and tells reporters, don't get cute. Welcome back to our favorite Canadian, starring Pierre Polyev, who narrowly edged out other favorite Canadians like William Shatner, Pam Anderson, and Geese. <laughs> now, you might remember this guy last month. He perfectly batted away at reporters' dumb questions while casually eating an apple. Uh, on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, a lot of people would, would say that you're simply taking a page out of the Donald Trump uh, Probably book. Probably like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure <laughs> a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... Well, you're um, the one who asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That still gives me goosebumps. Oh. Either that or it's scabies. But now he's back with more brilliance. This time he schooled a Canadian press reporter who asked him about last week's car explosion at the Rainbow Bridge border crossing between U.S. and Canada. An explosion that was just a car crash, despite initial reports suggesting it was terrorism. Listen as he calls her out for reporting on her company's own misreporting. Do you think it was responsible for you to call yesterday's explosion by the customs, uh, by the checkpoint at the Rainbow Bridge, terrorism, when no U.S. or Canadian officials said that was the case, or authorities said that was the case? Actually, you're wrong. Are you a CP? Okay, so CP, by the way, CP, just for everyone's knowledge, did have to make three corrections for falsehoods that they put into a single article. I think that might be unprecedented. Um, I'm actually thinking about checking with the Guinness Book of World Records to see if there's ever been a news agency that has had to issue three corrections for patent falsehoods that they admit they had been made in one single article and now you've made yet another falsehood in your question. Mm, more, please! Where you are wrong is that CTV reported that the government of Canada was presuming that the incident was terrorist. So, yeah, that was, and that's what I said in my remarks. And you think that's a responsible thing to go on, to make that, that kind of a, a statement at the time without speaking? What, what kind of statement? Calling something terrorist. I didn't. I said there were media reports. But that's the distinction we're making? Okay. No, there's no distinction. What I said, and I was right, was that there were media reports of a terror-related event. So I, you know, I just hope you're not going to print something that you have to apologize for again. <laughs> He's pretty good. <laughs> Meanwhile, the young Canadian reporter is so clueless, she's already got two job offers from MSNBC. <laughs> Kat, uh, I kind of like this guy. What say you? I'm just confused. Like, is this in a library? Like, where am I? <laughs> is this the news in Canada? Yes. Where it's like a press, it's just like one lady in a beanie? Yes. <laughs> Where's the rest of the press? She looks like she works at a coffee shop in Bushwick. <laughs> 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 I don't get it. But I mean, yeah, he said media reports, which that's on the media for making yeah. those reports. He never said, I think this. He said there's media reports of this. So yeah, he did, I think, a great job. And I think it's also the fact that he remains so calm. Yeah. But then again, I'd remain calm too if it was like time for questions it's just beanie lady standing <laughs> over there <laughs> beanie lady was funny it's a lot less intimidating what is even more sad is apparently they only had one microphone yeah. for all the reporters. <laughs> yeah. and and he was not sharing he literally was like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that she should that should pretty much tell you where, where this is going but this goes back to the point they don't think she didn't <laughs> research she just like they high five before the game starts. Yeah. It's like literally, hey guys, let's break out our championship shirts and stuff. The game's tomorrow, but <laughs> good. Like, <laughs> Joe, uh, is this how you should deal with hecklers? I think it's great. I was disappointed he didn't eat fruit. Yes. <laughs> I thought that's. I thought that was his thing. That he he embarrassed the press, and then he has a nosh that he has yeah, something. Because yeah. that would have been great. Like if it escalates that after something like that. He just takes a whole honeydew. Yes. And just because I, I never realized how powerful that is to yeah. say to someone like, "Oh, should I apologize because I listened to you?" And then just you just take out a whole edible arrangement <laughs> and you just start eating it right in front of her face. Yeah. Last word, Michelle. 
This is exactly what we said about the other yeah. British reporter. Mm -hmm. You have to give it back to these people. Yeah. And some people are willing to do it and others aren't. And the ones that are too polite end up just looking soft and wimpy and giving in to the... Give it back to them. Mm -hmm. This guy does that. Whether you agree with his views or whatever, he does that. DeSantis does that. And a lot of people don't like it. They get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be done. I think he should be the next prime minister.